Hello and welcome to yet another edition of Art Success with me, Adelaide Demoa. Today I am in the studio of the lovely Jenny Wiggins to discuss her views on art success and also her career as an artist to date. Jenny Wiggins studied her BA in Fine Art at Canterbury School of Art in the 70s and then went on to study an MA in Fine Art at Goldsmiths University. From there she went on to set up a foundation at Lewisham College and then went on with family commitments in between that still continuing her studio practice. Jenny Wiggins has been a full-time practicing artist for the last 16 years, so since 2001. And without further ado, let's get into the interview. I've just given a little bit of a summary about yeah. your background. Could you give me a few fillers? Please? Fillers? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to be an artist. I started off wanting to be a botanist. A botanist? A marine biologist, oh, wow. in fact. Well, mainly botany. And so at school, I did do art. And the only place I felt really secure and comfortable was the art teacher. She was wonderful. And when I finished, I decided to go to art school. But the interest in plants and um, biology has remained with me always. Now it's come out into my, in my work. It's come full circle. Full circle. Would you be able to sort of summarise your practice for me? I'm interested in work having some sort of meaning apart from merely existing as art. Solowitz said, the idea is the engine that drives art. So I always have to have some sort of idea behind what I'm doing. Uh, and really, it sounds really crass, but the ecology, what's hap what we're doing to the world, is just really, really shocks me and worries me. Particularly now, you know, with my family going on into the future, I keep thinking what's going to happen. Mm. And I don't think that art can ever give answers. That's not, not the job of art. The job of art is to ask questions. And so what I'm doing is asking questions through my work. That's what I feel I'm doing. I grow plants. Um, I have an allotment. I throw weeds onto the compost bin. Then suddenly I realise that there's some of these plants really have a right to have some sort of recognition. You know, some of my work has weeds in it, other has, has um, other very ordinary objects. I'm interested in ordinary things like lichen, like weeds, like bees, snails, those sorts of things. So I try and make work that draws you in because it has a, a sort of quality of beauty I suppose and then when you get further in you realize oh, it's a dead plant oh god and a fly most of my work two-dimensional work has a fly somewhere in them at the moment How a fun. dead fly why well because nobody likes them <laughs> so I think they might still have some sort of recognition <laughs> like snails I mean snails and slugs the only way people talk about them is how to kill them oh when do you hear anybody saying nice things about snails? And you don't. <laughs> yeah. And they are quite important creatures in the way th things function. And um, they're now thinking about trying to kill the whole lot of them in fields, you know. So I th thought I'd give them a voice. I did some collaborative work with them where they did the drawing and I just fixed and stuck it in a frame. The pictures themselves have got a very ethereal quality to them. The beauty of them really draws you in. I think the aesthetic is very, very important. Very, very important. I've always made art that has got an aesthetic which can be described as pretty. But that's such a bad thing to mm. say about somebody's work. Most of my work has always had this undercurrent. So, you know, you look at a snail drawing, perhaps, and you say, that's pretty. And then you realise it's a snail trail. Mm. And other pieces of work have always got some little sort of, my big pieces always have flies in or something like that. And you're definitely full time, like I said, for the last mm. 16 years. A lot of artists find difficult to come to the point of being full time. How have you managed to do that? <laughs> well, I've got a pension. Ah. Oh. I also have a husband and that makes me sound a very dependent person but we've always been very equal in our relationship and he totally and utterly supports my work. I don't just mean he gives me some dinner now and then. He supports me with the idea of being an artist. It's very important to him. Mm. So it's part of our life. And also I'm not very nice when I don't come here. 
So it's in his own interest. <laughs> I become really nasty. Yeah. <laughs> you sell work from your studio. Yes. Yeah. We have regular open studios yes. like the one coming yeah. up. Yes. Uh, you're doing that through open studios and relationships that you've established with clients through coming to open studios. Yes. Open Studios has been very successful. I do occasionally show in galleries. I, I like the Open Studios because I feel sort of they come into my space. So that's quite nice for me. You've had shows with galleries. How have you established those relationships? Just bumping into people or somebody's recommended it. No point in writing to galleries. Tried that. And it's usually somebody said, would you like to do this or would you like to do that? I don't have a representative gallery, but I've been involved with different galleries over the period of time. Mm -hmm. Would you like to be represented? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I would. But with the right gallery. Yeah. I mean, I was involved with an artist-run gallery called Skylark, which was very, very successful in what I learnt through being involved. But what I found was I felt I was starting to make work to sell, which for me was uncomfortable. Yeah. And I don't mean I don't want to sell my work, although I'm a bit uncomfortable about that. It started to become, the commercial aspect of it became sort of too much. But what I did find from that gallery was I just learnt so much about how, you, how galleries run and mm -hmm. things like that, so I was very grateful to them for that. You just alluded to feeling a little bit uncomfortable about selling work, why is that? Well, it takes me a long time to make a piece of work. Yeah. And they become very important to me. So it's quite difficult to let them go. I've got a friend who's a poet, and I wish I was a poet. <laughs> because if you're a poet, you have a piece of work which you work on, but you don't ever actually lose it. You keep your piece of work, but you give it to others as well. With a piece of artwork, sort of like a piece behind me, I've been working on that for a very long time and it sort of lives with me. And then if somebody has a piece of my work, it goes away. I don't have it anymore. It's not like a child, but it has resonances of losing something very important to you. Mm. I quite like uh, selling work to people that I know because I'll meet it again. <laughs> <laughs> meet them. The, the work, not the people. And um, I have done that. I've sold to people and forgotten. I mean, sold to people a long time ago, one particular person. I'd lost contact with her for a very long time. And then years later, I went into her house and there was a piece of my work. <laughs> it was like, oh, hello, you know, it was nice. Hello, old friend. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, I suppose more friends, really. But it is hard to sell. I'd just as soon not, really. But it's still nice. Because it shows that other people value it. Yes, you. that is the criteria of judgment. Yeah. Money. Yeah. And if someone's prepared to pay me money for my work, it's actually very thrilling. I do get excited. And then afterwards, I think, oh, God, I haven't got it anymore. I mean, there's one particular painting that I sold to somebody in Edinburgh, and I was really worried about it because it had a quite a delicate surface. And I, I spent some time talking to them about how to look after it, like it was a pet or something. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't like them. Doesn't like, can't go in the kitchen. <laughs> Don't put it in the kitchen. It can't go in the kitchen. I'll look after it. Good. Okay. Can you remember when you sold your first piece and what it felt like? Well, it's a very long time ago. I do vaguely remember it. And it was the first exhibition I had. And it was a print. Yeah. So it wasn't so dif difficult to get rid of it. And the second one, actually from the same show, wasn't a print. And I remember it very clearly. So it's all right. It's still in my head. But it, it is a very strange thing to sell work. Kind of emotional in a, in a strange way. There's a way. lot of emotional yeah. connection with the work. Yeah. 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 What would you say your, your biggest challenge to date has been as an artist and how have you managed to overcome it? The biggest challenge to being an artist is actually believing you can be an artist. You need, you need support, which, as I say, my partner gives me. But more than that, it has to, you have to believe that you... You, you, you have something that is very important to do. And that's the most difficult thing. That's the most difficult obstacle to get over. And how do you get over it? Practice. And um, that's the only thing. Just yeah. just have to get up in the morning. It's like anything. Very often I'll get up in the morning and I think, I'd really rather just go and do a bit of gardening or <laughs> go shopping. I need, you know. No, you just have to go to work. Yeah. It's a job. If you think of it as 
something that you do regularly and it's important, then you get over that problem. The patriarchal world that we call this lovely art world that we <laughs> live and work in, how do you navigate that as a female artist when you know and you understand that they don't put us in the history books unless her name is Frida Kahlo or Judy Chicago. We don't sell for anywhere near the prices that the male artists sell for. It's more difficult for us to get representation. How do you navigate that and still keep producing work and stay positive? <laughs> Um, now, I think I probably ignore it a bit, yes. but it is better than it was. When I first started out, there really were no women artists. I was told in a tutorial at college that I'd make a nice mother, and that's what I should be doing, really. The only person that I knew of as an artist, a woman artist, was Judy Chicago. She was like a little beacon somewhere, glimmering, but way away, you know, mm. in Chicago. It took me a very long time, meeting Mary Kelly and people like that when I was at Goldsmiths, to realise that I could be an artist. And it is not only patriarchal, it's ageist. So as an older woman artist, I'm even less likely to be taken serious. I just think, well, I keep doing it. They're missing out, not me, really. Yeah. And eventually, I'm sure in your time, things will change. And that sounds sort of bitter and thing, but I, I just think, well, I used to make quite strongly feminist work. Yes. And this work is much more, it's still very personal. It's still very much about me and my feelings about the world and what's happening to it and things like that. But I feel that I'm leaving it to you, your generation, to start fighting all over again. What's the thing that you're most proud of in terms of your career to date as an artist? I'm most proud of actually being here doing the work, continuing, and I'm very proud of the book that, that uh, Stephen Baycroft wrote, which included some pieces about my work and some photographs. I mean, it was really exciting. I was proud of having the show that led to that. I had a show here at um, No Format Gallery, a, um, you know, a single person show. Stephen came in and saw my work and talked to me about it and included <laughs> included some pieces of writing about my work and some photographs. What was the nicest thing that he said about <laughs> your work? In that book? The nicest thing that every, anybody's ever said about my work <laughs> is a three word sentence which said, like Rothko, Wiggins, dot, 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 dot. Now he wasn't saying my work was like Rothko or as good as. But it was because Rothko uses layers and layers and layers of colour. And I use layers and layers and layers of colour in my work. And he was making that comparison. Because even my white paintings have layers and layers of colour underneath because you can control how white works with colour. So that was the nicest thing I really <laughs> said about my work. Pretty amazing comparison. Yes, I know, but he wasn't actually comparing my work to Rothko, only the fact that I did layers. I'm sure he was. <laughs> By your personal definition of success that you've just given me, do you feel like you are successful? In my own head, I'm successful just because I'm making these pieces of work. If I sort of step outside a little bit, I'm not really, because not an awful lot of people know my work, you know. I, I would like to have a show further into London, really, mm -hmm. so more people could see my work. But then it might, they might want to buy it, mightn't they? <laughs> <laughs> what would you say that is your, your most ambitious dream for your work? That's it, I think. That's it. And my ambition is to have a bigger studio. Yes. And to just carry on doing work. And to learn how to do soldering properly. Because I've been trying to do it and I'm not very good at it. I'm sure there are people on site who can show Yes, you. I'm sure there are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if there was a young female artist wishing to follow in your footsteps, what advice would you give her? Believe that you can do it. There are lots of things that come in your way as a female artist. Partly that artists are obviously male. You know, culture says so. Believe that you can do it. You know, if you have children, if you have other things going on, relationships, things like that. Somehow just hold on to doing it. It's not more important than having children. It's difficult to do it at the same time. Yeah. Just believe that you can do it. And you can, really.
find a way of doing it. Hello again. Thank you once again for joining me, Adelaide Demur, for Art Success. Do subscribe to my channel because then that way you get to keep up to date with Art Success interviews, studio vlogs and exhibition vlogs. We do have open studios coming up next month from the 2nd until the 5th of June 2016. Do come down and check out Jenny's work. Jenny Wiggins is in number 17 at Trinity Wharf at Second Floor Studios. Do come and check her out doing open studios. If you can't come and check her out, her details are below with regards to her website. You can get in contact with her if you'd like to arrange a studio visit and come and see her work firsthand. Thanks again and until next time, bye.